Well, my full name is Arthur Leslie Leggett, and my date of birth was the 8th of September 1918, and I was born in Belgala, New South Wales. When I turned 18, I joined the 16th Battalion Cameron Islanders of Western Australia, and uh, I was in the horse transport section right up until the war broke out and then I enlisted in the AIF. I felt it was my duty to go over to join the army because my dad, my uncle, and every senior citizen that I knew had been in the First World War, and it was a, a matter of tradition and keeping up uh, the Australian attitude towards the empire. We were part of it. The motherland was in trouble, so uh, you had to join the army and go and give them a hand. When I finally left home to go overseas, my dad went back inside the building and said, poor little bugger, he doesn't know what he's let himself in for. And that's the only sentiment I ever got from my parents. Oh yes, they were right, all right. <laughs> As far as training went, well, I was in the signal platoon and uh, we had to do a bit extra, like learning the Morse code and ha handling signaling equipment, which was horribly outdated, outmoded. They, they just had no idea what was going to happen, obviously. We, had, we were issued with flags to wave for signaling. Well, that wouldn't go over very well in desert warfare and all with 1918 branded on them, and we were going to fight this modern war with this sort of equipment. We were never told uh, if someone gets killed next to you, keep going. That was never part of the uh, our curriculum. And uh, when, I don't think we gave it any thought. We did lose a few men in that company. And uh, I know I was sitting behind a wall up at the top of the escarpment and they put a couple of uh, dead, dead men beside me waiting for the truck to come along and take them away. And that was a little bit uh, gruesome as far as I was concerned to see two of your mates uh, laying there. But, at the same time, we were aware of the fact that we were in action and you just had to expect these things. It wasn't going to happen to me, it was going to happen to someone else. Uh, I, I know one occasion uh, we were camped outside Tobruk, that's right, and we were around the court, a bit around the bay and the word come through, there's a few prisoners down forward and could they send someone down to pick them up? So. The company commander allocated three men to go down and pick up these handful of prisoners. And about half an hour later, I said to him, you better come and look at this, sir. And around the, the uh, perimeter of the harbour was a long line of Italian prisoners of war. And in front of them was three Australian soldiers, but there was one Italian carrying the Bren gun, another one was carrying the ammunition, which was not the right thing to do. The captain pulled him up and said, what's going on here? And he said, I don't know. So he says, they come out of everywhere, holes in the ground behind buildings. And well, what are they doing carrying your Bren gun? Well, they're such nice blokes and they wanted to carry it. So I didn't see any <laughs> Because he got dressed down and given back the Bren gun, but that's the sort of thing that did go on. I was a bit gung ho, I suppose. I know at one stage there I was summoned to battalion headquarters, and there was five German paratroopers, prisoners of war there. And the sergeant major said, said these blokes, he said, give them a, a container each and make your way down to that well just over there. and." Uh, you're in charge of him. So, OK, we're about to go. And he calls me back. He says, well, you get it into your head. These are the enemy. They could kill you 
Now, will you fix your bayonet, put one up the spout and try and look dangerous? After Crete had capitulated, there was quite a few men there, could have been, oh, several hundred. But, oh, everything was going to happen. They're going to send in the submarine to pick us up, and they're going to pick us up in a boat, you know, all this. But eventually a German officer walked in with an interpreter, and he said, we've got machine guns up there, we've got trench mortars up there. Uh, if you want fight, you can have it but we suggest you just quietly come in as prisoners of war. He said, well, I'll be back in an hour's time. So that's what happened. We were just taken that easy. There was a period from when you were captured until you reached a central camp in Germany and be registered with the International Red Cross. There was that period, no one knew where you were or anything, and you, you could be shot, anything could happen. It wouldn't matter a damn to the enemy because you were killed in action as far as they were concerned. This is one of the big things that were a shock. I mean, as you say, you're built up, you're gonna win the war and you're part of the British Empire and all that. And then suddenly you're a prisoner of war. And uh, I remember thinking at the time, well, England can't help me. Australia can't help me, Mum and Dad can't help me. I, I'm in a bit of a spot here. I remember saying to her, well, Mum, I told you I'd be back one day. It just took a little bit of time, that's all. 